Hello! Today we are having a visiting tutorial at Natalia Sorokina's again. We are here for the sake of a new, rather complicated pattern – fishbone. The mistress of weaving is going to tell and show us how to perform this pattern in every detail. Hello, my dear colleagues on Weaving with Recycled Newspaper. Today I'd like to create a tutorial on the fishbone pattern together with you. This is my third casket made in this technique. You must have seen two of my articles made using this pattern in my blogs at Strana Mastero website. The first time I tried weaving with cardboard stripes. There were quite a few of them, so it was too difficult. The second time I woven with newspaper tubes. And the third casket has been made with newspaper tubes as well. The first thing I'd like to say is that this pattern looks equally nice both with multicolored and single colored tubes. However, in order to simplify and make the process of weaving clearer, I recommend you to try weaving with tubes of two different colors for the first time. I believe the main task is to understand how to weave the first two rows. The rest of the rows repeat the first two. Well, let's consider the process in detail on the example of some other articles. Here I have made a semi-finished piece. It is going to be a novel casket with a cover. I've woven a few rows in the technique of a regular two-tube rope. Then I've woven a row in the technique of a three-tube rope. You must weave a three or four tube rope. Why? Because the loops of a three and four tube rope are bigger and it is easier to insert additional tubes into them. We finish the row. Here are the tails of all the three tubes sticking out so we don't continue weaving. We take new tubes and start weaving our pattern. The first row consists of gluing additional tubes of some definite color to each pole. In my case, I'd like to start with brown tubes. I'm going to insert brown tubes into the brown row. I'd like to say from the very beginning that the number of the poles is of no importance. I've already shown you how to attach additional tubes on the examples of the previous patterns. No matter which pole to start, I prefer doing it with the help of a nail file. I take a tube and cut the end of it straight. I soften a tube a little, drop a bit of dragon glue onto it. And insert, like this for example, behind a nail file. Look, the tube is inserted. What do I do next? I don't insert tubes along the whole row at once, but start weaving the first row with this tube. What else to pay attention to? If you'd like the tubes to be slanting to the right, like in my case, then you have to add tubes from left from the left and move leftward. The fishbone pattern is actually weaving toward both directions at a time. Since it is impossible to weave toward both directions at the same time, we are going to weave by turns. Start with brown tubes. How did we perform regular layer-wise weave? In front of one pole, behind the next one. Look, I've glued this tube behind this pole. Now, lead it in front of the first pole, behind the second one. Now the next point. I can leave this tube the way it is. In this case, this part of the pole will be a bit visible, and you will get a kind of open work. But, the view will be steeper in this case. If I lead the working tube round at the same angle, it is long enough to leave the pattern up to 10-12 cm, about 4-5 inches. I 
However, if I place a tube flatter like this, anyway, it is not going to lie this way. There will be another tube laid beneath, beneath it to the right. So look, your pattern will be lifted five six centimeters, two two and a half inches. I draw your attention to this fact in my second book. The height of the pattern depends on the angle of slope of the first tube. I'm not going to make a slope like this. I will make a flatter one, this way. The pattern will get raised anyway, because the second row of tubes is going to be directed oppositely. So, we have already glued the first tube. Continue. As I've already explained, since the tubes are sent in leftward, we move rightward. Well, actually, it is not convenient to insert tubes to the right. Insert a nail file here, take a tube again, drop a bit of dragon glue, press the tube a little, and insert. That's all. Lead the tube as we did. In front of the first pole, behind the second. Here I've got two tubes already. One tube lying over another. I do press the tubes, but you may do without it, in which case your weaving will be more open work. Continue weaving. We attach an additional tube to each pole. Here we've inserted almost all the working tubes, there is the last one left. Make sure there is one working tube behind each pole. There is no tube behind this pole. So, in order to get it behind this pole, in front of this one and behind that one, I have to attach it here. How do I do it? You can lift these two tubes a little. They are going to lie back where they are supposed to be afterwards. You see, I've inserted a nail file already, drop a bit of glue and attach the tube right here. Drop some glue, raise these tubes again in order to make it easier placing the tube here like this, in front of the first pole behind the second one. Now I place these two tubes back where they are supposed to be. Smoothen everything wherever necessary. Now I've go, got a brown tube behind each pole. Now we have to attach one more row of tubes. This time I'm going to add pink tubes. I've got 36 poles here, which means 36 brown tubes and 36 pink ones. You may start attaching tubes from any pole again. How and where to attach the tubes? Let me show you the casket I've made once again. Please have a look. Here the pink tubes are attached, and then there are green tubes. A green tube is supposed to lie in front of a pole, but behind a pink tube. The same in our case. A pink tube has to go in front of a pole, but behind a brown tube. How do we do it? I take a pink tube. Press it a little in the same way. Drop a bit of dragon glue. You may start from any point. While the brown tubes were slanting rightward, the pink ones are going to be slanting leftward. So I'm going to move in the opposite direction, to the right. Take a look once again. I have to place a pink tube in front of a pole behind of a brown tube. I lift the brown tube a bit to prevent it from interfering, and here, look, in front of a pole behind the tube, here I insert my pink tube. Like this. That's all, I've inserted it. What next? I have to place it the way it has to lie as well. The principle is still the same, in front of one pole behind the next one. Don't pay attention to this tube so far. Look, in front of this pole, behind the following one. I place a pink tube here, above a brown tube. 
If I placed it in front of a brown tube, what would I get? In this case, this tube would go where it is not supposed to be. So we place it the way I said for the first time, above the brown tube. Like this, I've laid it. That's all. Now we are moving in this direction. I bend this tube this way. Now I'm going to place the pink tubes onto it. Take a pink tube, a pink tube again, insert it. The previous pink tube was inserted next to that pole. Now I'm inserting the current tube next to this pole, right here. I'm lifting the brown tube a little bit and inserting the pink one right here. Drop some dragon glue. Got it. The tube is attached. Take a look once again. The tube goes in front of this pole and behind the next one. Lay the tube. The pink tubes lie over the brown ones. Continue up to the end of the row. Again, look, I bent this tube to keep it from interfering. I'm going to lay a pink tube onto it. Lift this tube to make it easier. I'm showing you the way I insert the third pink tube. Look, the second tube was here, so I'm going to insert the third one here into this loop. In front of the nearest pole, behind the following one. And this way up to the end of the row.